Greetings, hello, welcome everyone, welcome to Dev Chatter. My name is Brendan, this channel is Dev Chatter, and together we are going to write some code today. So, let's go ahead and jump right into things. So, I want to make sure that I give you a brief uh, little intro. So, for anyone that is new, welcome to the stream. Hopefully you are here to see some code, do a little bit of chatting, and generally have fun with us. Uh, we are a... St a st well, I guess a, uh, a software-focused community. We like software development, we like fun things, and uh, we like programming together. Uh, I am the host of the live stream. My name is Brendan. You can see a little bit of that info right there. Uh, we are, let's see, on our 210th episode of the stream, and we've got another sub coming in. Uh, from Fixture Jake, four months of learning. Awesome! Uh, wow, yes, four months. That is fantastic, Fixture Jake. Thank you very much for hanging out with us over that time. And, uh, yes, the coding love is real. Uh, hey, Pudding, yes, uh, we're gonna write some code today. Uh, I actually want to start off by showing you all some code that, um, well, let's put it this way. It would not have been fun to, to figure it out on stream, uh, only because it would have been a real pain in the neck to actually get it working. Um... <laughs> Because, well, it was a pain in the neck. So, I will give that explanation of what it is that we're building there. Uh, just give me a moment, moment to do a couple of other intro things. So, if you are new here, first off, welcome. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, an inkling to talk with us outside of the stream as well, uh, feel free to check out our Discord. I tossed a link to that over in the chat. There are links down below to that as well. Uh, in addition to our GitHub, a lot of the code that we do here on stream is out on uh, is out on GitHub. So... Um, this program is not yet. I am going to open source it at some point, but it is not open source yet. Uh, this is so far the only project that we have worked on on stream that I did not just from the outset just have open source. Uh, let's see. The next thing I want to point out is uh, on Saturday we had our second episode of our YouTube series Dev Chatter Basics go live. So if you haven't been watching our Dev Chatter Basics series, uh, take a look over there. Uh, that is a series that is designed for developers of any level, whether you're a beginner or you know a uh, more experienced developer, doesn't matter. Uh, we are covering basic stuff, so um, if, if you are more experienced, expect it to be refresher things and reminders more than anything else. That if you are a newer developer, uh, expect it to be something that will help you get a good foundation of your understanding of programming, especially within C Sharp, because that is our main focus at this point in the channel. Uh, let's see, other things I want to mention? I think that's about it. Uh, so, let's talk about the program that we've been working on. So I mentioned that it's not open source yet, um, and I, I do stress yet, because I do intend to. Uh, this is the, the, the program. Let me go ahead and get the uh, other thing up and running, so we can see that. But I have a cool thing to show you. So I mentioned that I did something. I told everybody in Discord when I achieved this, and I tweeted about it and everything like that. Um, what this program does is um, <clears throat> when you run it, it opens up a WPF app. So this this here is WPF. Uh, and I should specify that it is a .NET Core 3 WPF app. Uh, so again, that's the, the preview version. So you'll notice that I've got like all the preview stuff running if you look in the top right hand corner. Uh, so this is just our, you know, cobbled together WPF app. Works pretty well. This is our status screen that shows the current state of things. Uh, doesn't have all the information. We've got, you know, pages of other information, settings, about page, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when we connect it, it actually connects to Twitch chat and it will allow, someone has already done it, I think. <laughs> there it is. So, uh, Coded Beard coming in with a 13 month Twitch Prime sub. That is awesome, Coded Beard. Thank you very much for uh, your continuing to sub to this channel. It is awesome. Uh, so, I don't think pudding is a color. Crimson is actually a color. Um, so, I could do menu green and it turns the menu green. And you'll see that it does these transitions, does them fairly fluid. And uh, it is pretty nice to uh, see those actually happen. 
let's go ahead and get a better menu color on there. So this is the default. If you just start playing, uh, I should specify this is Final Fantasy VII. For anyone that doesn't know, it's a game that came out in the 90s. Uh, it was very popular then, is still somewhat popular, and is currently getting uh, new attention because of the fact that the company that originally made it is essentially redoing the game as a modern... Like, they're, they're retelling the story in a modern game. Let's, that's probably the best way of phrasing it. Um... <laughs> uh, yeah, so, well, sadly, Coded Beard, I don't think you've got the shock one, because uh, I, I need to switch shock in so that everyone can use it. Uh, I had it as a tier 3 for now, but I'm going to rotate it into into a tier 1 slot uh, when I do a quick uh, emote rotation. The challenge is Twitch still doesn't let me have all of them, and we have, like, 11 emotes, so I have to rotate in which ones are available at any given time. So we'll, we, we will be rotating those in for our subscribers. Okay, so this game is Final Fantasy VII, and we have made it so that chat has control of menu colors. So chat can uh, either choose individual colors, or they can do some special commands like, you know, random, where it, you know, randomly chooses colors and goes to that. So this is the program we've been building. It's pretty cool. I did something crazy that I told everyone about, and this is what I was mentioning. Um, so I'm going to go to this website. It is called localhost5001, and uh, by that I mean I'm going to localhost and I'm going to port 5001. Now, here's the weird part. Um, if I go to API slash value, oh, whoops, yeah, I can type uh, values. Okay, so that's clearly the default API controller that I'm hitting here that has value 1 and value 2. But in addition, I could go to slash status, and I go to this status page that has hello on it, and that looks like a page. So what's going on? So that's kind of weird, because I've got that, and you might say, well, oh, you're just running a website. Well, no, I'm not really running a website, because what's interesting about it is I am... I have this, uh, I put a, an ASP.NET app inside of our WPF app. So when the WPF app starts, it also spins up a, a web application. So you have a WPF app that is a web application. So if I close this, this page is gone and, and no longer works, see? Because it was that WPF app. And if you think, oh, no, Brendan, you're not doing that. You're just doing like a, whoops, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Uh, you're just doing a uh, um, a multiple start, to which I say, no, no, I am not. I am doing a single startup. In fact, if I take a look at the program.cs uh, file, <laughs> j just to show it to you, we throw an exception uh, in the in the program main of our web app because we do not start this web app on its own. It is not started. Yeah. <laughs> so when I say we're not running this web app as a web app, no. We are actually running this as a library. Now you might be saying, well, why do you have it as a web app then? There are a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one being, I want to make sure that it's actually built using the web SDK and not the regular SDK. Uh, because this actually changes the way that it does some stuff, and, and I think that I might need to do... Like, if I don't do this, I think there's a bunch of other manual steps I'd have to do, which would be a pain in the rear. Uh, the other aspects that that will do is it will change the way that, um, that it gets displayed inside of Visual Studio. So we get some other effects like the icon change for www.root. Uh, and, you know, understanding within the UI. So if I, if I right-click here and say Add, it suggests Controller, because it knows, oh, you're in a web app. Whereas if this were just a class library, which, which technically it would only need to be a class library, it wouldn't have those suggestions of, like, Controller and View and things like that. So that's some of the benefit of keeping it on that SDK. Uh, although the downside is, it actually requires that I have this program with a with a main method in it. So this is required. If I get rid of it, I can't. I, I will get a build error. It it actually requires this thing, or it did earlier on me. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, see, program does not contain a static method. Yeah, 
So basically, they force you to have this entry point on the web app, but they don't make you call it. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, so the interesting thing about that is by doing this, my plan is to put SignalR in here as well and make it so that our application can have full, full and direct communication with a web overlay. Essentially making it so that somewhere on this screen, the streamer can actually put uh, essentially like displays of information about what's going on, uh, both in the program and in the game, while they're playing. So that is what I would like to see happen with that. Uh, I was hoping that Mr. Sh Shoji would be here, because uh, I really wanted to show that one to him. Because uh, he's building a thing that does some of that kind of stuff. And I kind of want to point out that if we go this route, we can actually fully integrate it. So uh, it could be pretty darn cool. Okay, so I think it's a cool thing, especially for anybody that's planning on building any kind of uh, stream-connected stuff. Uh, or if for any other reason you need to, uh, if you need to host SignalR out of a WPF app and not actually have like a, a website. So if, if you want a client uh, server relationship uh, using SignalR through a WPF application, this would allow you to do it. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So I thought I would show that because uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so let's see what we can do with it, actually. Um, so we have a controller right now, right? That's got, uh, we have values controller. Um, just for testing purposes, let's make a menu color. Let's make a colors controller. So we're not actually going to need this. So um, when the program's running, because we can change the colors inside the game, we can actually trigger a message to the 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 overlay to the HTML page through SignalR, telling it what the new colors are. So that would mean that we could display a menu section, and I could make this box right here be a Final Fantasy 7 menu right there that matches the color in game at all times without doing polling or anything like that it's just told immediately when that changes so the command comes in and it's just like boom yep here's the new color and it would be really really cool uh, you just uh, greetings welcome you just arrived uh, how are the HTTP requests uh, made um, each uh, through through browser um, I, I, I'm not sure what you mean by how the HTTP requests are made so uh, you so essentially inside of OBS if you're if you're running this as a, a browser source uh, it is using chromium uh, as as the internal browser inside of OBS in order to actually display this kind of content uh, since the web application is a DLL oh so ASP.net so you're wondering what is the web server so how is it how is it hosted so like not how the request is made but how the request is is responded to uh, how how we uh, how we actually handle the request yeah okay uh, so um, we are actually running it through uh, ASP.net uh, and I will I will show you uh, that in uh, in a second uh, greetings new duck uh, coated beard uh, also um, and uh, randactyl uh, yes uh, greetings hello uh, I don't think I said hi when you, when you spoke up earlier. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, one second and we'll get to that one. Uh, have you played with the worker service stuff yet? Uh, by worker service stuff, do you mean the background worker in .NET Core? Or are you talking about something else? Because uh, I'm trying to figure out what you mean by worker service, Coded Beard. Uh, and... Um, uh, the one added in three... Uh, I thought the background worker was added in two. Uh, worker service template in three. Uh, an empty project template for creating a worker service. Is this just a background like .NET like service .NET Core service? So you'd have a service like basically a Windows service. 
Create host builder, build run, configure host, host builder, create server Uh, Well, that's hilarious. That's basically how I made it work anyway. So they set this up to be able to run this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep, that's, that's, that's pretty much what I did. That is not, not far from what I did, but I did it manually without, without doing this. So, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically what we did, Coded Beard. Uh, that, that's why I'm running in uh, WPF Core 3. Uh, di didn't, didn't know that they'd named it the worker service stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> didn't know the name, but yep, that's what I ended up doing. So that's, that's why everything's, uh, well, I mean, one of the other reasons why everything's .NET Core 3 is because I wanted to have a .NET Core WPF app. So kind of forced me on that route anyway. But yes, made it totally possible. I will show you how we did that. So here is what we did. Uh, in here, which I need to move. So I need to move all of our IOC registration stuff out of here so that we don't have this garbage. Because I want this to be inside of an IOC class that's exclusively designed to set up the, the dependencies so that we don't have that garbage at the top of the file. Uh, because you need it, like, you can either use a ton of usings or you can have a ton of namespaces when you're, like, matching up uh, dependencies for an IOC container. You sort of get that, and there's not really a way around it. It's kind of like the. We need to put this, this code smell in one place in our code somewhere, and that's so it can wire everything up. Uh, you can separate those out into separate modules that load the dependencies separately, which you really only do if you have a module or setup, because otherwise it's not really worth it. Um, uh, like, aside from maybe just separating out by method or by using some extension methods to sort of split some of it out, that's about it. Uh, okay, so here's basically what I did. Uh, I grabbed a host. Uh, I set up that host. I told it to use the startup from our web project, so that's down there, as the startup for our web host, and then I call our configure service method, and this is what I want to move somewhere else, is I basically just had a configure service method. This is actually the same configure service method that I used when we were a WPF app. Um, I also did another thing. Because I am wiring up through the uh, web application now, I no longer instantiate our own dependency and version like layer. So um, in our WPF app, I was creating the IOC container and everything like that for our application. But since starting up this, we'll create one by default for the web application that we're hosting in here. Uh, I did not have to create my own, and it does its own, like, service collection, and if you take a look in startup, uh, it will do the uh, wire up of these uh, dependencies in here automatically for me. Uh, so I did not need to do any of that, and essentially this is all I had to do. Now one point that I do want to note, just for safety's sake, hey Mr. Shoji, you made it, I was hoping to talk with you today. Uh, so, um, essentially I just put the host right here. Uh, to hang on to it because I want to make sure that we never lose the reference to this I don't want anything getting confused and messing with it. So uh, we are maintaining a reference to it right there uh, And I did the same thing actually with our workload coordinator that we created before so it's just a thing I want to exist uh, and actually the workload coordinator That might get maintained just by the fact that it is in here. So I just need to have one get created at one point. Oh nothing uses it. That's why yeah, I put it in here because nothing else. So nothing else uses it. So nothing else references it. So nothing would would instantiate it. So I did this here because nothing else would ever create it, because I didn't make it a dependency anywhere, because it works entirely separately from everything else. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay, let me catch up on chat. Um, the web host builder. Yes, uh, that is that is where uh, some of the sweets are. You might say. Um, Opportunity to come back when Core 3 is released. Randactyl, that is awesome. Hopefully you make it back. It's good stuff. Uh, you just ported a load of Azure functions to it so you can run them in a service fabric on-prem and it works great. Coded Beard, that is awesome. Uh, you have a load of production stuff running on 3 already, including a WinForms app. Uh, Coded Beard, that is fantastic. I love that you, that you and your team are putting things on .NET Core 3 already. 
I am also one of those brave people that is using .NET Core 3 technically before it is released. I'm also a fan of C Sharp 8, uh, the preview of that. So I'm hoping that both of those, uh, that we get like final, like, you know, go live versions of those. I don't think that, I don't think there's a go live yet. If, I, if, if there is, let me know, because uh, that would be an awesome thing. Uh, nice, unfortunately, I'm in government and people are afraid. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be a while, Randactyl. That'll be a while then. Yes. Uh, and it, it makes sense why, uh, like, large organizations are slower to switch to some of these things. They just want to be a little safer. Uh, just applied for a Twitter developer account. Wish you luck. Oh, uh, good luck, New Duck. Uh, you're going to be a bit hit and miss tonight, but you'll certainly be uh, more free in a few hours. Mr. Soji, if you're here right now, mention something because I do want to talk with you. Uh, we were replacing .NET 1 and ASP Classic stuff with it, so it's already unsupported. Nothing to lose, essentially. Oh, that's nice, Coded Beard. Uh, the RC is supposed to be dropping any day now. Oh, well, that is fantastic, Coded Beard. I will definitely upgrade to the RC as soon as it is here, because uh, we have been using it here on stream for a while. Okay, so this is how it works. Uh, essentially, what we do is we get it loaded. The other thing that I did was... I'm now, instead of using our own uh, IOC layer, our service provider... Um, I am just accessing the, the service provider that is on the host. So essentially, since I gave all dependency control over to the uh, ASP.NET application, uh, I can so I can still use the same all the same IOC stuff I did before because it's all still wired up together. They're already still uh, configured. So essentially. Um, uh, because our dependencies are still wiring up the same way, using the same type of container, nothing really broke. So uh, it just kind of worked. So it was kind of cool. Uh, the other thing that we did is we now load the... So the WPF window, like here's the hilarity, like it gets registered out of the ASP.NET app now, which is like, okay, sure, why not? Because uh, I didn't want to maintain two... Like I could maintain my own reference to the to the services, but literally I'm only using it these three times. As the only time we're directly accessing the service provider, everything else is just auto magic stuff uh, that gets wired together. Okay, let's take a look and prove that this works. So, in order to do that, um, I need to go to the controller, and I mean, this is, this is, in some ways this has proved to me that it works too. This is not like I want to prove to you all that this works. No, this is like, I want to make sure it works. <laughs> so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this API controller here, and we're going to call this uh, menu, uh, menu color, we'll call it menu color values controller, which is a really long name, but it's not going to exist very long. This is just our proof of concept uh, that this works at all. So, um, when you do a, just a basic get against it, we need to return an ienumerable of string values, which that'll be fine. We'll return, so we'll return the colors as a set of strings. So I don't even have to change the type on that. Let's move this into its own file. So move that to its own file. Here we go. And then in here, instead of value one and value two, we need to get some real values. So let's see if we can't uh, accept the menu color view. Is it menu color view model? Hey, hey, it was menu color view model. All right, so that is the menu color view model right there, which we're gonna hang on to. So when this gets created, so this is gonna get created when someone makes a request to our website. When it does, it will call this. It will ask the service provider to get it the menu color view model that that exists uh, within my WPF application, actually. It's going to give us access to this, and I should be able to pull the values. So let's go ahead and see. Um, can I? I could just do that, but I also could just take them individually. So let's just take them individually, and we'll just put them in here. So uh, this dot, uh, what, top left, um, two string maybe? I guess we'll two string them. I don't, I don't see why not. Uh, so top right, whoops, comma, two string. Uh, let's see, bottom left, two string. Not sure what happens when you like, 
when you two string these what what is this type is this just a color it's a system drawing color yeah that would probably be fine okay all right um new duck you want to post tweets to your own chats api and you have a new dev account to use webhooks that's awesome new duck um it's funny because i work with uh, municipalities a lot and their systems are generally terrible uh Oh yeah, so uh, municipalities have notoriously bad uh, systems because they get really out of date because they don't have, they usually don't have the budget to update anything. So someone builds it once and usually like they built it once on a small budget. It was like, a, yeah, we've got time to build this as long as you don't like actually make sure it works all that well. <laughs> and then it gets a lot of bug fixes over the years for the worst of this stuff, but it's one of those like, yeah, that's a little scary. All right, let's run our application and take a look. So uh, we'll we'll see the WPF app come up, and then we should be able to hit our localhost app, which I'll hit the status page just to confirm that we get a hello. Mr. Shoji, are you still there? Uh, I'm trying to ping you one of these times when you're there. All right, so we should be able to load the web page. It comes up, and then we said API, so values would be the, the old one. But we want menu color values. Boom. Okay. So there it is. We have color. And then that should be the the set of colors. Uh, let me do this. Um, menu. Oh, I didn't connect. Sorry. Derp. So that changed the menu colors. And now when I refresh this page... Boom. Okay, so what's neat about this is because we used the the two string of the menu color, it was at, and and because it it so happens that the the Brendan uh, like color palette that we displayed on here is based on those colors, we can tell that it came back with dark red, black, black, and dark red. So this tells me that not only is our WPF app running, it is sharing all the same. Uh, like memory like objects so it actually has all the same state it, the WPF app and the ASP.NET app are sharing objects so that means that I do not have to actually deal with any communication layer between them they are the same running process uh, so that gives us huge power that means that every single time we make a change in game we can directly just send a like a hub message through SignalR directly to the website updating and, and updating the display on our screen. So every single thing this program does, update immediately. So that is gonna let it work kind of like uh, you know a basic chatbot if you built your chatbot as a website, but we don't have to be a website, we can be a WPF app, which is really kind of neat in, in my book because that means we can have this running like GUI program going where someone can do whatever they want. They don't have to have a browser window open and navigated to some, you know, management page, anything like that. Nope. Full running regular process that could be, for example, like uh, if I, I will point out if someone is actually running a modded version of Final Fantasy 7, they do have to run our program as admin. And the reason for that is that the Final Fantasy VII game would then be running as admin, and so the only way to actually mess with its memory would be to also be running as admin. So that is the cool thing. Um, so the question is uh, that I see in chat there is about uh, the localhost port, and uh, yes, um, we would have to do the port number out of a settings file right now. Uh, so with the way it's configured right now, um, there might be a way to make it so that we could start the website somewhere inside of the WPF app. So have like an on off button uh, for the website inside of WPF. Uh, and then we also might be able to put in things like uh, control of the port number and stuff like that. Um, MDE box, welcome. Thank you for that follow. Uh, sorry, I was in the middle of saying something, so I didn't want to uh, like jump to that right away, but thank you very much. Much appreciated. Anybody else in the chat that's uh, enjoying the stream and seeing uh, any interesting stuff that we're doing, feel free to hit the follow button to make sure they get notified when we go live. So that is the cool stuff right there. Um, so I love that. The fact that this just worked is just, you know, awesome. So cool. 
Uh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at how this works. So we're able to get that running. So cool. Uh, I want to try to add SignalR because that's the next big thing. If we can make SignalR work out of this, then we're golden uh, because that actually opens up some really awesome other use cases for people because that means that you could have two WPF apps talk to each other, say through SignalR if you wanted to. So you could have applications either uh, between computers on the same computer, anything like that. Like you run this app and it can actually have like communication sent to it through SignalR if you wanted. So that would be pretty neat in my book. Uh, obviously, you know, depending on circumstances, things like that, what you want to do with it, I'm sure you can figure that out. Uh, well, oh, uh, I didn't see what the message was. I'm sorry, something something got caught as a link, it looks like. Um, so if that was uh, something legitimate, just let me know and uh, and I will, uh, uh, or uh, let one of the moderators know what it was you were you were trying to say if that was a link. Um, what it, yeah, Rafa, what, what is that and why are you bringing it up? Um, is this game just the vehicle for this proof of concept? Unless I'm wrong, the lesson seems to be we can host these ASP guts in any app we've built and utilize the networky fun bits. Uh, yes, Randactyl. Uh, so the game thing is a cool and fun connection that we can do with it. So I think it's interesting, it's fun, and it's kind of neat. Um, the, like, is it specifically for the game? No, you can use this for anything. So uh, this is just you know, hey, cool, we can do this thing, neat. Um, so if you if you have a way that you want to use it, awesome. Go ahead and, you know, apply this somewhere, come up with a way to do it. But some of these things are just, you know, see what you can build with it. Uh, use case where I think this will be very nice is specifically for anybody that is doing a... Uh, yeah, so Fuel Snable's right. It's kind of like building a Windows service with a GUI. It's, it's kind of like what this is. Um... So, uh, use case, the, the other use case where I see this uh, coming up is um, uh, specifically for anyone that wants to build any, like, streaming integration. So, uh, so very much anybody else that is doing a uh, Twitch stream kind of a thing would love the ability to do this. So, uh, if you are, if, so if, if, if anyone in the chat is, is a Twitch streamer, you also do Twitch programming streams like what we do here. Uh, then this is just a game changer because you suddenly could just build. Um... Yeah, exactly. So we're going to add signal R because that's what should let us actually uh, have like really nice communication there. Uh, because it would be really cool to click a button in a WPF app and then have changes automatically happen in a in a browser view just based on that through a signal R connection. Uh, so I think it would be very very cool. Um... Let's go ahead and wire it up. Uh, so the status contr uh, controller just sends us that view right now and does literally nothing else. Um, this is a status page and all it does right now is just say hello. Um, Okay, let me do that. Uh, so, yeah, not not really styling on there, but sure. Okay, uh, let me commit any little bits of changes that we have in here. Um, so that is... Um, add a proof of concept menu controller. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was committing. All right, so... Uh, Rafal, uh, yeah, that's... Um, is, is very cool. Uh, I might look at it at some point. Um, try not to do too much, like, advertising spam, though. Uh, 
it is a neat neat concept uh, if you do want to bring up that kind of stuff um i would actually recommend that if people actually want to talk about cool things um like hey i found a cool piece of tech i want to talk about it see what other opinions people have uh check out our discord and um, I recommend that to anybody, like, you know, if you find a cool cool piece of tech, so for example, uh, Coded Beard was asking if I was using, uh, what did Coded Beard called this? Uh, the worker service stuff, which I guess I'm using the worker service stuff, but I didn't know it had a name, I just was digging through and was like, oh hey, they have this thing, I wonder if I can leverage it for that, and it's like, ooh, yes, I can leverage it for this, uh, and you get it running, it's fun. Uh, but anyway, the, the point being that uh, if Coded Beard had seen that and was just like, hey, I want to talk to other people about this cool new tech, like, let's discuss it and figure out if we can come up with some use cases for it, Discord's a good place to do that. Okay, so... SignalR. Uh, we want SignalR Core. Where do we put it? The web app? I think we put it in the web app. Um... So, just to make sure, signal our, uh, signal our core. Signal our core. I think we don't need the NuGet package because I think it's automatically in now. Um, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, services add signal our. There's the one that I think we want. Uh, ooh, nope. Um, yeah, I think we want to do this. So let's go to startup and inside of here, services add signal R, and then we need to create a hub. And I kind of want to look at my old code for, for how I did this because um, in our other applications, when we set up our signal R hubs, we actually set them up uh, with interfaces so we could. Uh, uh, essentially like mock them out and everything like that and have them abstracted away but in addition we set it up so that they had uh, strongly typed messaging systems instead of uh, sending their messages just based on a string uh, we actually created strongly typed hubs uh, and I want to make sure that I create those uh, that way because that's one of those like I do it once and then take a look and it's like yeah did that work cool okay so why is it complaining about use signal R? This method is obsolete and will be removed in future version. Is to use map hub. So just do we just app dot map hub? Well, maybe if I have a real hub, it won't complain. Anyway, let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's finish setting this up. I'm kind of surprised by that. I thought I thought that one was still used. Um, class. Um, Uh, let's call it the menu hub. So anything that needs to get menu updates would connect to this hub, and this will give all updates about menu color. Uh, I expect so I expect to have two overlays in this application we're building. Uh, one of them I expect to be like full information overlay, giving you know actual status information uh, about the game. And then the other ones, I want to create a menu that you can just use as a backdrop for anything else, or maybe just for static text, uh, one or the other. So, menu hub, and uh, this is going to be, what is an iHub? What? I thought it was iHub. Is it not iHub? Uh, no, it's just hub. Hub. Oh, yeah, it's a hub of type something or other. Yeah. It's a hub of type something or other. That's what it is. Um, um, menu display, um, menu notifications, is that what it is? Menu notifications, uh, okay. Something like that. I'm gonna need to look up how I did that before, but anyway. Uh, menu hub. Uh, menu hub. Uh, 
let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say menu hub just for safety's sake. Menu hub, and what does this say? Implicitly creates a new path string from the given string. Yeah, it's saying this whole thing is obsolete. Uh, but why don't you suggest me the new version then, you piece of junk? Um, okay, so they deprecated this. What did they say? This method is obsolete, will be removed in a future version. The recommended alternative is to use map hub of a T hub inside of use endpoints. Ah, okay. map hub so they want me to do it in here okay that's fine I can do that yep yep totally we're on board we're on board got it totally doing that sound good so we'll have our controllers as endpoints and we'll have this as a hub endpoint that's fine uh, so for anyone that doesn't know, um, in, in .NET Core, they're kind of changing this concept. They they wanted to do something about uh, actually having endpoints defined so that you could uh, more correctly define like what things were going to get uh, like run something in a process so you could have a better guess on, on where it was going to end up. Uh, so that ran without error, so good. I mean, that's mainly what I wanted to check there was that, that it would run the startup and not throw exceptions it didn't throw exceptions so we'll call that good uh, so now let's see if we can't wire up the menu hub um, I'm actually just gonna switch this to a regular hub for now and we'll do this part later um, wire up as the hub T T for menu hub okay so we're gonna have to wire that up um, so for now we'll just give it this task send message Which is gonna be hacky for now. We're just kind of gonna like shove it together. Uh, and the reason we're gonna do that is because I just want to make sure this works. Because uh, we just want to make sure that um, that it's even running. Okay. Um, oh, strongly typed tubs. Yeah, here we go. That's the one I wanted to do. Um, Yeah, see? I menu notification. Uh, and it's not receive message uh, stuff like that. It is um, color changed. And it'll be menu colors menu colors so that's what we'll have on this so if we make this an i menu uh, menu notification <clears throat> then we end up with that uh, and i don't think we actually need to define these inside of this unless we're doing these specific ones whoops did not mean to do that uh, using hub iChat enables compile time checking of the client methods. So yeah, cool. Uh, change the name of the hub method. No, nope, I don't need to do that. Handle events for connection. No, nope. handle errors. No, nope, we don't need to do any of that. All right, let's take a look. Um, no, I want tutorials of SignalR with JavaScript because I want to go steal the code for how we do this. Uh, oh yeah, I have to add the SignalR library. Um, can I do that this way? Forget if I can do that this way. Solution Explorer, right click on the project. Is there not a um, is there not a CDN way to just access SignalR? That's not going to be the right SignalR, is it? Um, SignalR core CDN. 
Oh, maybe this is it. Hang on, this says core, doesn't it? ASP.NET Core SignalR is an open source library. Uh, yeah, this might be the one that we want. Um, okay, we'll try it. Uh, and we'll copy this one, so the main one, not the minified one, first. Let's just toss it right into the head of this for now. Um... A script element allows authors to include dynamic... Wait, what? Why is it yelling at me? What's the squiggly for? They've got me confused here. I'm like... It's like telling me what a script tag is. Must have a closing. Oh, okay. So they don't like that I wrote it that way. That's fine. See? I knew there was an error for some reason. They gotta tell me what that error is. Uh, okay, so we've got that on the page. Once it's on the page... Uh, oh, is that not... Um, wait a minute, where is it? There it is. Uh, so it's on the page, and then down here, sure, yes, okay, cool, great. Uh, add signal our client code. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Here we go. Uh, connection signal our hub with URL, so yeah, that's what we need to do right there. Uh, so let's just toss this script direct onto the page. Script, 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 bot, script, um, connection, I don't really need most of this, but let's just take it anyway. Um, okay, so we're doing a connection. We're going to Menu Hub. It's going to build connection. Um, I'm not doing anything with stuff on the page that we're grabbing. We want to on color changed. We should be receiving a menu colors object. Which, now that I think about it, it might not be able to serialize, so let's take an array of menu colors and expect that. Uh, actually, let's just put them in. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. We'll just expect all four. Uh, so we'll do... Um, how are we representing these colors? Maybe a, maybe it's a, an RGB byte array? Um... So top left, uh, byte, um, top right, byte, uh, bot left, byte, um, bot, bot right. Are always, always treated as an RGB byte array? Okay, uh, we can do that. So we're gonna get this as an RGB byte array, and then on here, maybe I just console log them for now. Yeah, we'll just console. Uh, we'll just console log them for now. We don't need to do anything special with it. I don't need to send messages back up, so we don't need that code at all. So let's do that. Would it be worth having a struct color RGB with conversions uh, to and from... Uh, Gareth, that already exists. That, that's, that's already there. Um, but the actual value that we end up with uh, when we call down uh, with the message is going to be this one. So th this is what uh, we're going to receive on the JavaScript side, so I won't have a struct down here for it, but... Um, oh, that's a good point. So on the JavaScript side, it would be good to have an R, a G, and a B. 
Um, I, I mean, so my option would be I could do this, I could just make it so the serializer knows how to serialize it, um, and that would work as well. This isn't the permanent version. I don't know why, I don't know why I'm discussing this. Like, <laughs> I just want to see if we can send it. Uh, this is not intended to be the final version. This is just a, this is just supposed to be a proof of concept. I should just do it and, and stop talking about doing it. Um, so I said I was just going to console log them. Gah! Console log. Uh, what am I console logging? Uh, TL. Uh, let's see. These are the Bs. This is the R. That is the R. Okay, so color changed. We'll print those out for now. Um... I agree. Gareth, I agree 100%. We're going to do it that way. That's already how we how we use it within our system. Uh, we have convenient methods right now that convert uh, our, our structs into byte arrays. And the reason that they do that is because we need to write memory as a byte array. So that's actually why we have those already. So we could make it so that when you serialize it calls those, for example. But for now, this should make it work. Um... Let me jump back into here. Uh, where did they call it on the server? Where did they call the hub? Oh, they send the message up and the mess. So they're sending it up from there. Uh, so they're sending and receiving in the same hub. So when one person sends a message, they all receive it. All right, give me a second. I'm going to hop into my other code here. <clears throat> Okay, so where does this get called? So someone else gets this. Okay. All right, so where do these colors get changed? So in... All right, this is not the permanent place where this is going to go. because I certainly don't want to be referencing that here. Uh, menu, uh, menu hub. We can't reference this here because this is in quote. Yeah, see, this totally doesn't work here. See, it is hilarious how much that does not work here. Um, where's the CS product? Right here. Discard that change, please. Okay. Um, could the view? Can the view model do it? The view model's over. No, it's no. The view model's not in there. What can connect these? What can do it? Something needs to do it. Um, it's a good question. Oh, I gotta think through these dependencies. Um, someone needs to be able to access the menu hub that can access both of these, which means that it needs to live either here in the web app or up here. Uh, it could listen... No, I know what it can do. I know what we can do. Um... Something needs to wire up the hub. <clears throat> Do we make it the WPF app? The hub gets wired up automatically. We can have it wire up with a connection 
So if it does a domain events register against the menu color changing, we could have it call um, it can't call it from here because that has the Color change, that's what I meant to do. There we go. And then it would be, instead of object, this would be the E, we'll say. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of single letter variable names, except for there are a couple of exceptions to that rule. Uh, the exceptions are if you're doing a counter controlled loop, so think for loop, where it is just an iterative uh, value that has no other meaning than number of times through the loop, and you're not actually using it. Uh, the other instance where I'm okay with single letter variable names is a lambda expression parameter, if it really is just for a selector of the object type you're already on, not anything more complicated than that. And uh, and if it is more complicated, just use a real variable name for it. Uh, the other example uh, that I'm good with is uh, the event args parameter of an event. I'm okay with it being called E. Uh, so if you're using an event style structure, uh, I'm okay with E for the event args because it's just known, okay, that's the event args because it is so common for so long that any anybody reads it that way. And then I'm okay with the two-letter variable um, ex for the exception that uh, you've caught inside of a try catch block uh, but generally speaking I like longer names but there's that handful of exceptions where it is just so well known and so common that everybody does know what they are okay so we want menu colors as the property here except that we just said we're breaking this apart into all the separate pieces so uh, so that'd be top left dot to ARGB? No, what? Do I not have a, um, oh, uh, it's as, as bytes. That's what it is. I didn't do two. I said as bytes, uh, and we want RGB. So as bytes RGB. So, like this, this is what we're going for. Just like that. Uh, and then instead of top left, it'd be top right on that one. Um, and bottom left and bottom right. Uh, and again, um, we will not do that structure long term. This is going to be serialized away in some nicer way. But that should create, I think, what we want. So we're just going to register this so when that domain event fires, uh, it should call this and automatically send a message telling us about our color change. Cross your fingers. I, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Uh, so... That was the status page that we told to connect. So this is the status page. Uh, and if I'm down here, uh, okay, so it is connect. So it says it connected to the menu hub. That we have this message right here inside of our console saying it connected. Now let's go ahead and connect our app. So WPF app is connected to chat. You can see the chat message over there on the side. So when I send a message in chat, um, do 
Does it throw an exception? Does it work? What happened? Uh, oh, okay. Implicit function evaluation is turned off by the user. <laughs> Alright, let's find out what the exception is. Uh, check disposed. Cannot access a disposed object menu hub. Menu hub has been disposed? Oh, does it create a new instance of it with each request? That might be what happens. If that's the case, uh, then what we need to do instead is... Um... What? No, it can't be. Where's our stack trace? Let's have a look. Okay, so we came in through here. We were executing the command. We raised an event because someone did that. Our menu color changing. We said get clients. And then it said check disposed. Okay, let's do this. Let's drop a breakpoint right there. Let's find out what's happening when we get to that point. So, as I said, it's a little bit weird because our application, you know, we're sort of running two applications together right now. So we have this over here. Let's restart that. So we're, we're connected to the hub again. And we don't have any of our retry logic. We're going to build in retry logic and, and things like that. So this uh, maintains a nice persistent connection. <clears throat> then once that's in there, we should catch our breakpoint. So this should have our colors in it. Whoops colors right there so that's black dark red dark red and black so that's the correct colors so up to this point everything is working exactly as we expect clients uh must not actually have the clients menu hub does not contain a definition for clients what What? S? S. Clients. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. It's clients, plural. Because it should be able to, as many clients as connected to it, it should be able to get. dot all dot color changed <clears throat> what's it doing you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna run this again one more time we're gonna grab that exception to see if this is a uh, see if this is something that is just common because <clears throat> it is just a signal our exception we're not doing anything weird right now So we're connected over here, and we're going to go ahead and say um, uh, menu. Oh, does it not throw an exception if no one's connected? Oh, that would be funny. 
because it's not really there or registered yet. Okay, let's go ask the internet. Um, so we removed our hub name. Um, let's see if someone else has run into the same thing. Um, That's not going to be our answer. Um, object disp uh, disposed exception when calling from a callback. Yes, this is us right here. This is us. Uh, okay, so so the hubs are uh, okay. So so this is what I was worried about when I when we first got this exception. I mentioned the fact that. Um, this might be, I, I said per request, but um, what this would mean is that um, injecting the hub context into a separate class. So... <clears throat> okay, so let's let's call this. Uh, so we're gonna do something similar. Instead of doing uh, that, let's just do. Uh, I do I do like the concept and I like the naming both. Actually, uh, we're gonna do this for multiple. We're gonna put all of our hubs in here uh, because they're gonna need to go over here. Actually, that's that's not the worst spot. Um, Actually, man. I do like the, the name hub emitter and um, we'll do a tour uh, and interestingly we needed to do this hub context approach anyway uh, of type menu hub um, I think. I'm pretty sure this is how I did it in my other code. Yes, it is. <clears throat> yep. Menu hub context. See? We, we have actually deviated from what the internet person's suggestion is because uh, they, they said to do this, but I'm doing mine because that's the way that mine works. Um, um, it's funny. Um, so we'll call, actually we will just call this the menu hub emitter. I almost want to just put this beside the other one actually, which we might, might do. Um, I'm not totally sure on that one. Uh, Worldwick, uh, but what will the internet person say now? Um, wow, Brendan, you're so cool. You and your, uh, using strongly typed hubs instead of our non-strongly typed hubs. How incredibly awesome you are. That's totally what they're going to say. Um, they're probably not going to say that. <clears throat> uh, 
That was that was a joke, mostly. Mostly a joke. Okay, there we go. So it will talk to that. And then we're instead of talking to clients directly, we're gonna say menu hub context dot clients. All color changed. There we go. So we have shifted the code over to here. Um that's funny because we were gonna do this code anyway, because this is how I build hubs I was just trying to skip some steps turns out in our circumstance we are required to do it this way uh, because we actually need to maintain that so I was gonna wire it up this way anyway because this makes the dependencies nicer um, I don't know that we're always just gonna be watching this domain event uh, we might make it so that there's a direct communication instead of this uh, and the idea is the hub emitter interface will exist somewhere else uh, so nothing else needs to know about the actual menu hub. Um, so let's say um, to do make interface to be used in menu accessor. Uh, so I actually do want the menu accessor to have this so that it can have direct communication. So regardless of what colors we change to inside of our menu accessor, I want to be able to send a message down here so that if I'm changing the menu color in uh, FF7 like 20 times a second. I wouldn't complain if the if the web browser updated that frequently either. That would be cool. Okay. Um. I, I mean, I didn't check, but let's let's see if it works. Let's try this again. So when this is up and running, as soon as this WPF app starts again, and I'll drag it onto the screen when it does. Uh, we'll refresh this page, which will get our communication going again. Now we will connect. And it's live. And press a button. I did not get a message here. I was supposed to get a message here. <clears throat> um, that's a good question. Oh, I didn't actually use this anywhere. Derp. Derp a derp, herp a derp a derp, derp a derp, herp a derp a derp, derp a derp, herp a derp a derp, herp a derp a derp a derp, derp a derp a derp, derp a derp a derp. Let's extract an interface that we'll call iHub Emitter and it won't have anything just yet. Thanks, Gareth. By the way, uh, the code that I that I pulled in order to grab this hub stuff, th this code we're doing right now, is actually what triggers that derp. Uh, so that's the funny thing, Gareth, is this is actually the, the, this is the same code that does the derp. That's where I grabbed this from. <laughs> Herp a derp derp. Uh, okay, so instead of doing the menu registration thing like that, I am actually just going to make a... Uh, public task, public async task, I should say. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, just a task. Um, so we'll await that. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Um. Maybe we'll call it show new color. Show new colors, plural. There are four colors. Uh, let's pull this up. Okay. Uh, and it doesn't need to be a menu color changing anymore, does it? It just needs to be a menu colors. Because we're not going based on the event. So it's just a menu colors. Hmm. 
menu colors whoops menu colors like that which means that simplifies as well uh, <clears throat> could you drop the async and await from there and just return the task yes and I should There we go. I'm like, why am I still getting an error? And I think it was uh, ReSharper not catching up with that being done, or maybe it was Visual Studio. One of them was not fully caught up with the fact that I'd changed the code. Uh, but yes, Gareth, you are absolutely correct. That is the way I should have written it. Uh, okay, so this needs to get referenced inside of the menu access, men, many, many access or menu color access. So there it is. Whew. And you have a minute and you're like, wait a minute, you can't reference that? I can't? Oh man, thank you for the heads up. I had no idea that I couldn't use that there. Uh, now I don't know where in here to put this yet, so I'm just going to drop it in the root. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. It's only temporary. We're gonna put it somewhere else. Um, here's how not. Here's how not temporary it is. You know I mean business when I put it to do in here. Uh, move to correct folder slash namespace. There we go. <laughs> that ought to do it. All right. So we have the menu hub emitter here uh, inside of our app dot. XAML.CS, we need to specify these as a thing. Uh, I really need to set up some stuff for this. Uh, services, I do not, uh, I guess we could have more than one of these, but I really don't think we need more than one, since again, we're running as a WPF app, uh, and we want this to exist at all times. Uh, menu hub emitter is a menu hub emitter so we're gonna do that so this has now been used the menu accessor has it let's go ahead and wire that up to a read-only menu hub emitter object and when we set menu colors so we said uh, right memory you know what uh, let's make this a local method. Extract a method. Update display color. So we'll say update display colors, process name and menu colors. This would do all of them, I think. Yeah, menu colors. So if we extract this as a little helper method, then every time we update this would happen. So it's menu color and steps. Just name a menu color. Yeah, okay. That should work. All right, let's try this. All right, so if we when we do this, this is going to like smash the heck out of that uh, little chrome window if if we did everything right. That chrome window is going to be like freaking out. It is going to be funny, I think. Like it's just going to load with data. Uh, refresh this. Connection happened. That's connected. Let's try it. Cross fingers. Hey! There we go. That should be all the colors. I don't, I mean, it didn't display right, but it spit them all out like almost immediately. Um, cool. Um, let's see if I can't get a debugger on there now that I think about it. Oh, that's totally gonna break things now that I think about it, de debuggering this. <clears throat> um, d 
H A U J. These must be the bites treated as strings? That's very much a like, what? Kind of moment there. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, so, byte array sent down to JavaScript did not work nicely. Uh, I wonder if we can send it to hex? Do we want to send it to hex? I don't think we want to send it to hex. I don't think that I, I don't think that's actually going to help us. I think we want the RGB values, but I'm not sure. Um, so we're sending the values, so that that's working. So that's cool. Um, I mean, realistically, if we change how the menu notification works, it's not this byte array, so it really just is a, um, <clears throat> if it really just is objects of um, RGB. Um, RGB to uh, signal R. Uh, RGB to JavaScript. Uh, must include RGB, please. Wrote that there for a reason. Um, yeah, bummer. I was really hoping that, that someone would just be like, hey, yeah, you can just use this and it will just go. Uh, all right, so... If we make that simple struct that we were that we were talking about doing, um, what just serialize? Um, <clears throat> uh, let's say simple color. Uh, And we'll do red, green, blue. Uh, we'll do a, a C torp to just have R, G, and B. We'll have this take in a System dot drawing dot color <clears throat> that we'll just try creating from this. Actually, now that I think about it, before I go down this road, um, whoops, derp, uh, color dot r, color dot g. Color dot B. Uh, before I go down the road of having simple color, what happens if I just put in the color in here? Which color did it do? It did system dot drawing. Okay. Let's just find out what that sends through first, and we'll see what we get on the other side. Oh, this is going to break. Derp. Come on. Let's go check out the... Yeah, I know. I didn't convert. Never would have guessed that was the problem. Okay. Let's try this. See what it sends down to JavaScript. If it works, then we can do some really neat stuff because we can actually have the menus on the stream change at the same time as the... Uh, menu down uh, actually in the application, which would be really crazy because then we could get that same flow going on. Uh, so, yeah, 
Um, let's remove that. I don't need to be catching all of those. Okay. Um, first off, let's just watch the console to begin with. We'll do an initial one. Well, that actually works out perfectly. So if I just send down the system drawing color, we just have the data. So that's cool. So dot R, dot G, and dot B are just there. Uh, so we sent down more information than we needed, though, is the only problem. So, but we might be able to get around that. Um, <clears throat> so that's really cool to, to see that those all did come down. So, okay, that is freaking cool, by the way. That is, like, really freaking cool. Um, that is nifty. Um, okay, so we have this data. Um, so this is setting up a menu hub. Set up the menu color hub. I'm not changing its name to menu color hub. It's going to remain as menu hub because menu color hub's too long. But for description there, I'm willing to put that in. Uh, exactly. Uh, we need to we need to make this not just the proof of concept. We need to make the actual version that we want now. Uh, so that does mean a couple of other changes. So. Uh, I think the accessor having this, I think, is the right way to go. We need to move this to its correct location. Um, so let's say notifications, um, or maybe maybe emitters. We'll say emitters for now. We'll just put all of them in here because we're going to need more than one. So that'll be the menu hub emitter. Let's get it the correct namespace. Get rid of this. We don't need it. Maybe we'll do it later. This is uh, moving that into the emitters folder. So move I menu hub emitter to emitters uh, namespace. <clears throat> okay. So the next trick we need to come up with is actually doing that display. And actually this, I kind of want to have live somewhere else. But maybe I'll just leave it there for now. Do I really need it somewhere else? I really don't. I guess it could live here. This is the code that actually does it. color accessor um, do I actually want to await this or not I'm not sure run in the background safely um,
Do I not have a logger here? Oh crap, I don't have a logger in here. Oh, dang it. Um, okay. All right, we're gonna add a logger for exceptions in the future. Oh, hey, there's a preview update available. Cool. Thank you, Visual Studio. I needed that heads up. I could use a new version. Derp. Brave about what? Uh, upgrading to new versions? Um, oh, I'm, I mean, I'm already on the preview build, so that's already pretty brave there. <clears throat> this is not a uh, this is not a regular version of VS. this to do. <clears throat> um, don't need that anymore. We're already wired up. So it's cool that our uh, signal are just kind of worked out of the box. That was nice. Let's get rid of this. I don't need that. Uh, this is our actual web page. The site's not running. That's why we have the disconnect error there. Um, do 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 <clears throat> okay. Um, do, 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 do. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so what did he do? He did this. Oh. Oh. Well, that's weird. Okay. Oh, and he's wired up view now, too. Okay, that's cool. So I was going to see if we can't... Uh, run uh, Mr. Shoji's code inside of our application. So, uh, Mr. Shoji, if you're there, uh, this this is the cool thing that we can talk about doing, which is see if we can't just load this in and have this app run both of them. be a cool thing to do but anyway so we can send back the menu color at any given point with that so that is a cool little solution there um what else do we want to send um
So menu color, I think, is something that is going to get used across... Huh, excuse me. Across multiple displays. I expect someone to want to just have the menu color displayed in a separate window. So I expect this to have that. Um, let's build a page for that. So we made a status controller. Let's do, um, let's do a menu controller, which will also just do a view. <clears throat> what? Pages menu? What the crap? No. Why did you make that? No, you're wrong. It's not what I wanted. Folder. Uh, menu and then inside of this one whoops inside of this one add view and we'll call it index empty without model don't use a layout page for now maybe we'll use a layout page later And when we do stuff like this, Visual Studio and ReSharper like to fight a lot. Uh, let's call this um, Menu Display. <clears throat> okay. So this needs to do basically the same thing that the other one does. So why didn't I just copy this one? Because it's going to be the same thing. We're going to need to actually extract out this script code to be somewhere else for now. But uh, for now, that basically does it. Okay, status page. Pull in the, the uh, signal R from the CDN because we're cheaters like that. Don't console log this. Um, do update color uh, objects from here. That'll connect to the menu hub. Uh, and then someone can use this to display anywhere they want. Uh, so instead of... Instead of this, I'm gonna do this code here. This will just be for uh, background control for the streamer. Okay, that's basically a note for future me there. So we've pulled that, we created a new little layout page like that. Um, what is that? It's trying to add EF again. Stop adding EF. Stupid scaffolding Visual Studio, get out of here. I'm not using any framework. Uh, I need to talk to Microsoft about that. That is really absurd that it adds that. I'm clearly not using any framework anywhere. I don't have authorize in here. I'm not using its membership. I'm like I'm not using identity. I'm using none of it. It should not be coming in here with that crap. All right. So this is adding in a menu display. Yeah, exactly, Calvin. Rage. Like what the crap, guys? Uh, adding a menu uh, view page. Uh, also, um, for Displaying blank menus. Okay. I want to see 
how the styling works and whether or not it does anything at all. Uh, let's take a look at Mr. Shoji's uh, example. So Mr. Shoji puts this inside of the div. This has some view code, so we're gonna chop that just so we don't have to deal with it. This one's the menu one. We don't want that one. We want the status one open. So this is the status page. <clears throat> we'll do this. As I said, we're not using view yet, so let's cut the... So we'll cut out these um, one-way bindings. Um, somewhere over the rainbow. Uh, hopefully they don't have that. They probably do have that trademarked or something, but I don't think they come after me. I don't think they will. Uh, 1337 gil. Uh, and the time is currently uh, 12 hours and 48 minutes. Yeah, 48. That, that's an 8 right there. And so he made an, a character template thingy. We're not going to do that for now. We're going to skip that. Nope, not binding that right now. We're not going to pull that. This is just a this is just an example. So I had suggested that uh, Mr. Shoji uh, go and um, thanks Gareth for reporting me. Uh, calling calling Disney. <laughs> great, thanks. You're, you're such great friends. Such great friends. I I see how it is. Uh... Let's see. Does he have any styles in here? Or are the styles all in a style sheet now? Oh, good. He pulled all the styles into a style sheet. Fantastic. You know what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to go find that style sheet and not use it. That's that's what I'm going to do. Because cause I'm awesome. That's That's why. Uh, no, actually, the reason why I'm not going to use it is because the one aspect of this that I haven't figured out yet is static file hosting. So I need to figure out how to get the styles on here. Uh, if I could get static files working... Keyframes... Uh, all right, I don't need any of this stuff yet. We don't have anything to do with, we don't have any slot stuff. We don't have any armlet stuff. Uh, so slots can all go away. We're not doing any of that. We're not doing weapons accessory things. So these can go away. We're not doing HP stuff yet. Uh, cause we're not really pulling his, his code in. Right, we're like, we might at some point, but we have not yet, so it's only if he really wants to. I'm just pulling this in for proof of concept, so FF7, text, layer, border, yeah, so those are fine. Uh, base is fine, I don't really need to deal with time, but it's okay. Um, text, that's fine, okay. I don't know what these styles are going to do, but we're about to find out. Yeah, we're just grabbing some CSS styles that uh, someone else came up with that should do some of that color overlaying stuff. I'm not sure what he does by default on it, so we're about to find out. Ho, ho, ho! That is nice. Good job, Mr. Sh Mr. Shoji. Uh, that one display is wrong, but that looks good. That looks good. Alright, uh, so he's doing color updates somewhere by just overwriting this, but we don't want to do it that way. We want to do it uh, not... So he was doing jQuery polling before. We want this to be triggered by our signal R instead. So let's see what's going on. 
What did you do? What did you do? So he's got top left bottom, so he has those bound to there. Um, so he's just setting the style variant of each of these based on these values when they change. So this must be, ah, yep, this is just grab the new color set and then update. So we can do this, I think. We're about to find out. Um, can we get away with this? Um, yeah, so that's the gray he was talking about, I guess. Um, so he's converting that to a hex color, it looks like. E data color top left. Um, hang on. Uh, he says, uh, that is a string that he is assigning to that. He's pulling out of the save map, so... Yeah, it's doing a hex color. Um, so if we wanted to match what he was doing, we would have to, to hex this. So since he is using hex for each... Uh, um... We technically can do that. Um, the question is, did these come down with a hex value or not? So let's just put in TL for now, which is not gonna work, but it's, you know, gonna be broken for the right reason. Bottom left and bottom right. Okay, so that is supposed to be a hex color. I am confused by his RGB A values that he's got in there. It's like these plus that. I was expecting that he'd be messing with the alpha channel, but that's not the alpha channel. I don't, unless they wrote it in some weird way, which I'm confused by. So I'm not sure how his gradient code is working, but we'll, I guess, find out. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Oh, that's funny. He even did the ordering the same way I did. Uh, that was just the, the ordering I decided to do because it, like, reads the way that at least our society generally reads things. Okay, so I want to throw a debugger here. Let's toss in the debugger, we'll catch on these. Okay. Then when we change the color, We should hit the first time. Now let's take a look. I want to find out uh, by bringing up the console here. It actually sent us a whole bunch of things, by the way. That's the that's the funny part about this. So we'll bring up the the secondary console here, and we're gonna say. Uh, so first off, TL. Let's expand this out and see what this thing has. Um, so tl.name might actually just work, because if it's not a named color, it's going to be, it's putting in the hex value. 
I mean, alternately, I can just send down the hex. So let's try putting in the name and just see what happens with that. All right, let's try it. Um, so we'll say dot name for now, uh, and then just see if it works. <clears throat> uh, Fuel Snable, you are uh, a horrible person sometimes. That, that, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, every once in a while there's, like, stuff that you're like, Oh yeah, no, I could help you with this. I'm not sure you're really going to want the help, though. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this. That didn't work. Those colors don't seem right. Something's wrong about those colors. Uh-uh. Nope. <laughs> Not the right colors. It's trying. So we can tell that it's trying. Uh, but it's just not quite there. So, uh, I think if... Uh... Because I don't know exactly what Shoji was doing with this, but Shoji, Shoji should know how he was doing this. Linear gradient to the top left. Yeah, I think I will ping Shoji and uh, see what he thinks about that. Because um, I think it would make a really, really cool addition to the application if this, uh, if we can make this window display and always match these colors. So that's the concept we're going for, is make this always match those, even when it's doing its transitions. So like, you know, we click the button and it like just changes on the fly to exactly what we want it to be I think that would be phenomenal because uh, then you could display this somewhere on your stream and actually have the information and uh, right now the way that uh, Mr. Shoji does it is uh, he actually has it polling once a second to grab the color information but I like the idea a lot better of the app just telling it what changes have happened because uh, you can do other things with it as well uh, and in fact we can then have a display that looks like this, where any of the windows on my screen can be these same menu things and all be getting those updates when they happen. So they could all do that color blend change thing. Um, so could be very cool. Uh, alternately, what we could do is we could tell uh, the window itself to do the color change because we could get a, give it a notification that says, hey, we're doing this transition. Go ahead and start yours too. Here's where we're going. Uh, and then the, the menu could figure it out so we don't have to send it like, you know, 20 pings every time we do a change. But that's the basic concept. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, so, yep, yeah, neat stuff. We will get that working well uh, on, on, another, uh, on another episode. Um, for now... Um, I want to go ahead and get us raiding a friend of ours, because I need to get going for the day, but don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. First off, I want to make sure that I tell everybody that is here to uh, check out our Discord. Uh, if you haven't yet, it's really awesome. Uh, I also want to recommend that everybody uh, check out our YouTube channel. We've got cool new content that's going there that 
Uh, in addition to just archives of all of our episodes here, uh, we are putting like specific courses over on our YouTube as well. Uh, so feel free to go check that stuff out. Uh, but as I said, don't go anywhere. We are going to be raiding uh, another stream, so there will be more development goodness. Uh, I want to ask that uh, that you at least stick around for the raid to say hi over there. You don't have to stick around further than that if you don't think the content's interesting. But at least take a look. I think you'll like it. I want to make sure that I thank Crimson Green and Gareth for uh, hanging out with us today as moderators. We had this wonderful person follow us, and uh, we had uh, three subscriptions from Rubix, Fixture Jake, and Coded Beard. Uh, for anyone that was new here, welcome. Thank you for hanging out with us today. As I said, there is a new uh, series that we are doing on our YouTube channel called Dev Chatter Basics. If you haven't taken a look at it, I highly recommend it. We're doing some fun stuff over there. I'm trying to do episodes on Saturdays, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, either way, I want to thank you all for hanging out. I'm going to put us on our outro screen and queue up that raid so that we can go over. Uh, make sure that when you do get there that uh, you say hello and, uh, you know, be friendly and everything like that. Represent our community well because the Dev Chatter community is pretty awesome. So thank you for hanging out with me today, everyone, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Happy coding and take care. So that stuff probably built, but our hub is not going to send that out. Dev chatters in the house. Defend, defend people. Don't you let those chattersauruses in here. Get out of here with those chattersauruses. Actually, I have my own chattersauruses. Is that Rafault? Did I say that right? Correct me if I'm wrong. We're drinking a nice white mocha milkshake brought to you by my wife. Miss, well, I was gonna say Miss Bald Bearded Builder, but she's not bald or bearded. Not really, I, I don't know. I guess she's a bit. white chocolate, white mocha. Oh, that's right. No, 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 it's white. I think it's white mocha. 